That's right, in today's video we are going to be attempting to one-shot every boss with Minecraft's newest weapon, the mace. This is episode 5 of Hardcore Minecraft. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, before we go ahead and get ourselves one of those shiny new maces, I need to upgrade my armor because right now, it's still diamond and it needs to be netherite. So let's go ahead and use the wool from our wool farm to create a boatload of beds, head to the nether, and get mining. And there we go, our first two pieces. Ooh, that's what I like to see. Finally, that's one, two, three, four, and five debris from one bed explosion. That was my last bed and we still need six more. Also, I accidentally threw my ender chest into a piece of fire, so unfortunately, it's going to be manual digging from here. And that is 35 and 36. Oh, and I guess 37 as well. There is one more thing that we need to grab before we can make our netherite armor, and that is going to be a upgrade template, which we can get from a bastion. All right, let's see if we can't make this quick and painless. Oh my gosh, that is very bad. Who did? Get out of here. And there we go, a upgrade template, netherite scrap I'll take, and a snout armor trim. That's two, and another piece of debris. Now what do we have down here? One more template, two ingots, and another netherite scrap. This has been a great haul. Let's drop all of this debris into the blast furnace. And once it's done smelting, craft up 10 netherite ingots. We also have to duplicate the upgrade template, which as you can see is not cheap. But without further ado, let's make ourselves some netherite gear. Now, this is more like it. Next up, we need to find ourselves a trial chambers, and we're going to do that by making a cartographer and trading with him until he offers up a trial explorer map. Based on the size of the dot on this map, this thing is pretty far away, so let's not waste any time and get flying. This is actually going to be my first time going into a trial chamber, so if I act like a complete noob, don't make too much fun of me. And here we are. This might be the craziest structure I've ever seen in Minecraft. I guess let's attempt our first battle in the trial chambers. Oh, I just destroyed a pot. Is that skeleton a punch on it? Ouch, this actually hurts. Did I win? Hey, a piece of bread, thank you. Oh, and a trial key. I actually don't know where to use these things, but I guess we'll find out. Spawner number two. Thank you. Oh, a breeze. That's cool. You're kind of scary. Is this a vault? Let's give it a try. Ah, okay. Arrows. Oh, what's that? Potion of Bad Omen. Interesting. Let's give this room a try. There do seem to be more mobs this time. Kind of getting outplayed right now. Please stop doing that. Okay, that's another spawner. Let's go grab that one. Oh, and they have armor. Wow, okay. What's this effect? Strength. Ooh, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Golden carrots. Thank you. That one over there, that's a key though, right? There we go, ominous trial key. Okay, let's find one of those vaults that have the good stuff. I think this one? <sighs> Ooh! Wait, that's the thing, right? Heavy core? Wait, there's no way. That's the thing. Apparently it has a 7.5% chance of dropping, so we just got really, really lucky. Okay, we got what we need. Now let's get out of here. So here we have it a mace, the endgame weapon of Minecraft, and now that we have the mace, we are ready to start killing some bosses. I think it'd be best to start easy, and I think the easiest boss in the game is probably the Elder Guardian, so we're gonna have to go on an ocean temple raid. Luckily, there's one right behind the ocean monster that we built in episode 3, so unlike the trial chambers, we won't have to travel too far. Okay, let's get straight to it. I want to leave the Elder Guardian on the top alive, as that is going to be the one that we're going to kill, so let's break into the side here and go for the first one. And there it is. And of course, I'm not gonna miss an opportunity to get all of these beautiful sponges. Second guardian, where are you? Ah, uh, there you are. 
And now that those two guardians are taken care of, we can move on to step two of the plan, which is going to be preparing the Elder Guardian up top for its eventual demise. To start, I'm going to break the roof, which will give us an open space to land in. Then I'm going to build up some walls and drain the top room to prevent the Elder Guardian from swimming around. Sponge is already coming in handy. Oh, I may have made a slight mistake by not closing off this hole on the bottom because the Elder Guardian has now swum away. Right up here, Mr. Guardian. Let's break open some more space for him. You have nowhere else to go. Swim up, swim up. Okay, this is close enough. Now we just need to fly up into the air and give this dude a good whack. I think about a hundred blocks should do the trick. So this should be right about good. Put on the chest plate. Oh, wow, okay, um, that was a mistake. I failed. Um, woo, that is why we have the totem. Okay, let's give that another try. All right, third time's a charm. This is a lot harder than I thought. All right, try number four. And I burst another totem. Okay, we better not use all of our totems right here. 100 blocks in the air. And there we go, over overkill, and that's one boss down. A lot harder than I was expecting, but you know what? That's why you start with the easy bosses. Though, I don't even know if I can classify that one as easy anymore. Before we move on to the next boss, there is one thing that we need to address, and that is going to be our totems. Because if there's one thing that that Elder Guardian taught us, it's that there's going to be a lot of failure. So we're going to need a lot of totems. And how do you get a lot of totems? Pretty simple, you make a raid farm. In the interest of saving time, I'm going to put 10 seconds on the clock, and when those 10 seconds are up, we will have a fully functional and hopefully pretty efficient raid farm. Let's get straight to it. And done. The tutorial for this design will be in the description. Make sure to check it out if you want to build this farm for yourself. Now for a quick demonstration on how it works, we're going to open this trapdoor close behind us, come down to this little spawning room down here, and drink a potion of bad omen, which I got from killing a pillager captain at a nearby outpost. Then we just have to wait for this timer to count down, and once it does, the raid will start. This is definitely a lot more relaxing than having to fight the raid manually. From just that one raid, we managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight totems of undying. But I have one more potion of bad omen, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that, and then we can move on to the next boss, which is going to be the Wither. First things first, we need some skulls, so. And there we go, enough for two withers. Now we could just do this out in the open, but there's a risk that the wither could move around while we're falling, and then we would miss the target. Instead, I'm going to grab a bunch of cobblestone, convert it into slabs, find an open space, and then build a floor and wall using the slabs. Right now, the wither would blow straight through this, but if we add some water, our setup is now mostly witherproof. The wither can still launch these blue skulls which destroy basically any block, so we can't make anything fully indestructible, but this should do the trick for a quick one-shot. One last thing we need to do before summoning the wither is going to be killing all of the mobs in the area, because if we don't, the wither is instantly going to lock on as soon as it's summoned and try to shoot them. Sorry, cow. And pig. And sheep. And horse. And chicken. And bee. And with that, we are ready to one-shot this wither. The plan is simple. We are going to spawn the wither in, fly up to about Y360, and then fall from the sky and hopefully land the mace hit. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous because this could go horribly wrong, but you know what? Let's give it a try. Wither skulls down, fly up in the air to about 360. It's pretty high. Almost there. Put on the chest plate. Aim down and hope for the best. I missed. Let's fly away. Oh, that was bad. Okay, now, okay, you know what, I'm gonna try again. Let's try this again. If this works, I will be very surprised. Come on, Mr. Wither. I missed again. Oof. 
I have one more, so worst case, we can restart, but I do want to see if I can get it on this one. Where is he? Right there. Come on. Oh! Midair! Do we get him? We get the star! That was crazy. That was like a hundred times more cool than killing it in this thing. I am not mad about that at all. Anyways, that's two bosses down, time for the third, and trust me, it's not going to get any easier from here. The next boss on our list, if you haven't guessed already, is going to be the Warden, which means that we are going to have to find an ancient city. From what I know, they seem to spawn more frequently underneath the mountains, so this seems like a good place to start. All right, down we go. This one seems to be pretty promising. Straight to the deep dark. Now let's see if we can find a city. This is a crazy cave. Oh wow. And there we go. Less than five minutes to find one. Okay, let's do this. Now before we do any looting, I do want to see if there's a skull trigger nearby that we can use when we actually spawn the warden in, preferably in this general area. Okay, I think one of these should work. Let's block this one off and use this one right here. Now we just need to walk around in this area and make sure there's no other Shriekers. Alright, I'm like 95% sure this area is clear, so we can move on to the next step, which is actually raiding the city. First chest, nothing really good. And in the second one already, we have Swift Sneak 3. Perfect. And actually, let's put that on our pants right now. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's so much better. That's a ward armor trim. Ooh, and an enchanted golden apple. A very good hoe. A different armor trim. And a bunch of other goodies. Oh, I've made a mistake. You get three strikes, so we've got two more. Ooh. All right, now that the looting's done, let's get down to business. Let's block off a few more of these sensors. And then build a simple warden trap into the wall here. The way it works is really simple. When ready, we can activate that redstone circuit right there, which will rapidly fire this piston. The warden's going to be attracted to that noise and then fall right down here. This two by two area here is where we're going to fall and hopefully one shot the warden. So this will be the official drop zone, and I guess our entrance into the ancient city if we ever need one. In case when we go for our attempt we don't hit the warden and we miss the shot, we need a way to get out of the killing chamber very quickly. To do that, I'm just going to dig around this chamber, and since the warden is 3 blocks tall, it can't walk around. Then we're just going to dig away around 50 blocks so that we get out of the warden's attack range. And with that done, we are officially ready to attempt this one shot. The first step is going to be activating this redstone clock. We're going to attach that to the piston so that it starts firing and then uncover our Skulk Shriekers. I think we've already had one strike, so we need to activate it twice. There he is. Okay, we can run over here and get down below, and hopefully the Warden will come down into our trap. Perfect, okay. Now we can back up and go to the surface. We're going to fly up to around Y500, maybe even 600, just to be safe, and then we're gonna fall all the way down. Right, monitor our Y coordinate. Gonna need a lot of firework rockets here. This is really high. Okay, we'll call it here, put on the chest plate, look down, make sure we land inside of the hole. Perfect. I missed. Ooh, okay, that is not good. That's why we have the totems, okay. Ooh. Okay, try number two, fly up. Chest plate, and we are falling. And there we go, second try. One shot the warden. Not too bad, actually, that was probably easier than the wither. And we also get a skulk catalyst as the prize. 
Okay, well, I guess we have a warden trapping and killing system if we ever need one. Let's get out of here and move on to the final boss of the video. First things first, we need some gas tears. With those, we can craft some end crystals, which we're going to use to respawn the dragon. Let's take a quick nap, and then we're off to the end. This might be the last time I see you, Mike. Hopefully not, though. This is going to be the most dangerous thing that I have done so far in this hardcore world, and there's a very good chance that we die. But you know what? If you never even try to do anything dangerous in hardcore, what's the point in playing? So let's do this. That's one crystal, two crystal, ouch, three crystal, and four, four crystal. Perfect. There we go. First things first, we need to get rid of these crystals. I think I can aerial. Yep, perfect. Look at this, professional Minecrafter. I need to be careful not to blow myself up though. And then for these ones, we can just break here. Perfect. And one more. Okay, now we just need to wait for the dragon to perch and we can start trying to one-shot it with the mace. And to get that one-shot, we're going to need to be 300 blocks in the air and also land a headshot. So this is not going to be easy. Looks like we have a perch. Okay, let's do this. That's not 300, that's 300. Let's put on chest plate, look down, and, oh, we missed. The time window is going to be pretty short, so we gotta be, gotta be quick with it. And while we're waiting, if you haven't already and you're enjoying the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Please, perch dragon. All right, here we go. Need to be quick with it. Okay, let's go. Ooh, this is really a tight window, okay. So I think we need to get on the tallest tower, and then as soon as it starts perching, we need to just gun it up with the rockets. Yeah, take your time. Take your time. No rush. All right, let's perch. Let's go. And it looks like the timing's okay on this one. And, uh... We got it! First try! Oh my gosh! <gasps> okay. I'm gonna be so honest with you, I spent like two hours in the training world practicing this and I could get it about 10% of the time and we just did that first try. So there you have it, all four bosses, one shot with the Minecraft mace unenchanted in hardcore Minecraft. I have no idea how I just did that. I mean, I'll take it. Okay, well I was expecting to spend a lot more time here and potentially multiple dragons, but we just did that on the first try. I guess back to the overworld. But there is one more thing that we need to do, because right now, I have four items representing the four different bosses that we killed with the mace, but nowhere to put them. So let's do what any normal person would do. Build a giant mace that will serve as a trophy room. Now this was meant to be a segment in the middle of the video, but unfortunately I lost the recordings, so instead you get this cool time lapse and a nice interior reveal where we have the perfect amount of space to place a sponge, a nether star, a skulk catalyst, and a dragon head. And with that, I think our work is complete. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. But with that, this has been Glitching Out. Goodbye everyone!